Hello friends, welcome to a new 3ds Max tutorial. Uh, this is Gökçe from cgcave.com and today we are going to learn about uh, or continue learning about the spline tool. And uh, the thing I want to talk about today is uh, how to create uh, closed splines uh, or the commands or the tools that help us create closed splines. Okay, to experiment with this, uh, I want you to uh, go to the top view, hit T for that, and grab the line tool, uh, which is which was under the create splines line, and then just try to create a closed spline. Now, uh, as we learned before, if I just click on the start point in here uh, for the last point or vertex, uh, it will automatically close the spline. But for this example, let's leave this open for now because uh, uh, we want to learn how to close this, okay? So let's create a random spline like this and then hit P to go to the perspective uh, window. And let's uh, first uh, apply an extrude modifier on top of this. And you will see that if I increase the amount value in here, you will see that uh, we don't have a closed spline because we don't have a closed volume after the extrude modifier, right? Uh, the reason that this is a thin geometry or zero thickness geometry, which is uh, not realistic because uh, in the real world there is no uh, geometry uh, as a th uh, zero thickness geometry, um, is that this is open in here, right? This is not a closed spline. So let's delete the extrude, get rid of it uh, for now. You, sh you could just go uh, one level down, but for now let's just delete it. I've hit this button in here uh, to remove that uh, modifier. And let's uh, tinker with these tools in here, okay? As you can see, there are a lot of tools in here. It's not like a, a rectangle or a circle tool or command which has only one or two properties. This has a lot of them, right? Because this was, uh, as we talked before, this is editable spline. And um, you, as again, as we talked before, if you create a rectangle, for example, you could apply an edit spline uh, modifier on top and you can achieve or... Uh, see the same uh, comments or tools, but here in the line we have them uh, automatically. Okay, now to close this, we need to weld these two vertices together. Okay, welding uh, is a term in 3ds Max uh, which uh, says that these two vertices uh, should join or uh, should merge with each other. These are welded vertices or uh, when you weld two vertices together, it becomes one vertex. So this is uh, a valid vertex, let's say. Uh, this controls both of these uh, segments. But these two are not valid, okay? They have one segment attached to them. So to be able to weld these, just select these two. You need to increase this threshold, weld threshold, uh, because uh, this weld button, uh, what it does is it welds the vertices within these thresholds. Uh, the uh, position wise of course if they are uh, close to each other they will uh, they will weld so if you increase this uh, they can be a little bit more far apart from each other so let's increase this to 10, uh, 10 centimeters even 100 centimeters for example and if i hit weld you will see that those two vertices weld together and now if i apply an extrude modifier on top you will see that this is a closed spline okay by the way, there is a way to check uh, if this spline is closed or not. You don't need to apply an extrude modifier always. You can go to the spline, sub-object mode, select the spline. And here it says if it's closed or opened. Okay, let's open this and I, I want to show you uh, that it says open in here, opened in here. I'm going to hit one and select this vertex this time. And there's another tool in here called break. And as you can see, weld and break are uh, opposite of each other and if I hit break then when I select this spline again it will say op okay which means if I apply an extrude modifier on top it won't be closed even though it seems closed it's not okay because we know that it's open from here let's try to add an extrude and see okay and this is a common problem with uh, AutoCAD drawings for example when you ex import them into 3ds Max uh, usually you find some uh, vertex, vertices not welded with each other. So even though it seems closed, most of the time when you add an extrude modifier on top, it's, you will see that it's not closed. So uh, you need you can check it like this as well. Okay. 
And right now, uh, we don't know which of these uh, vertices we know, of course, because we broke it. But uh, let's say we imported this from uh, AutoCAD and applied an extrude modifier on top and it didn't work. We really didn't know, the, uh, don't know which vertex here is not welded or which vertices in here is not welded, right? So this uh, threshold value comes in handy at this point because if you uh, decrease this to point 0.1 again, select all the vertices, you can hit con uh, control A for this, which means select all. And when you hit weld, it will only weld the vertices that are close closer than uh, 0.1 centimeters to each other. So it will just weld these two together. Okay. This is a very neat trick. You can use this up. The only reason this threshold value uh, is here is this trick uh, I showed you. And now if I select the spline, this time I'm not going to add uh, an extrude. Uh, you will see that this is closed. Okay. By the way, uh, I want to show you some more tricks in here. Uh, you can get rid of any of these vertices you don't want with delete. If you select any vertex and hit delete, it will just get rid of that vertex as you can see. Or you can go to segment mode. I've hit uh, two for this. And in the segment mode, if I select the segment and hit, hit delete, it will get rid of that segment as well. You can use these uh, tools uh, or comments to uh, change the shape as you like. Uh, you can, of course, hit Ctrl Z to undo what you did. So you can come back to the original shape as well. Okay, let's delete. Uh, I'm, uh, I've hit segment again to get uh, out of the sub object mode, uh, uh, which selects the object for me, the actual object. And if I delete now, it will get rid of the object. Okay, so we need to be mindful or careful about uh, this delete button. If you're in a sub object mode, it will delete the sub object. If you are in the object mode, it will delete the object. So, okay, so be careful about this, please. Okay, let's hit T and create, uh, try to create another shape this time. Uh, this time I want to create a shape like this. Uh, I want to create a room, let's say. I'll start from here. Uh, actually, uh, let's see the dimensions as well. I'll hit S and activate the grid points. Start from here. Go up six meters. Uh, go right two meters, uh, three meters, sorry, go down one meter. Uh, I'm holding shift as I do this, by the way, this will snap uh, my angle to 90 or orthographic uh, degrees, let's say. And then I, I'll complete this. I want to make this uh, symmetrical. Uh, by the way, if you clicked somewhere wrong, I this was three meters and this is two meters. So I want to just make it a little bit longer. You don't just go on like this. You, just, you hit backspace, which will uh, take back the last point or last vertex you just put in. And then you can just hold shift and click again to create um, a more correct shape. Uh, then I'll go down. Uh, let's, let's make a mistake again. I'll hit backspace and make it right. Okay. And then I will just uh, get in here and close the spline. Okay. Hit P, Z and you have a room uh, with the dimensions we just mentioned okay so uh, again let's say uh, we don't have this segment in here okay and we want to close this up because the problem in 3ds max is it's a little bit difficult uh, to add lines to the uh, not difficult but it's a little bit awkward let's say or weird if you're an autocad user uh, especially or a rhino user for example we have this object and sub object uh, mentality in here so in Rhino or in AutoCAD, you just draw a new line and join them and that's it. But in uh, 3ds Max, you need to use some different tools because uh, let me show you. If I just go ahead and draw a new line in here, uh, I'll change the snaps to vertex this time. It will be easier to connect these. And if I extrude these two, you see that it, they're not joined again, okay, because we then they are not even in the same object so it's a little bit weird i know but uh, when you select these two it will say two shapes selected in here as you can see we don't we even don't see the properties we were seeing before uh, by the way in 3ds max uh, if you select more than one objects that are not instanced uh, you won't be able to see these uh, properties because you can't change the properties of two objects at, at the same time okay that's a little bit uh, weird as well not weird but um Interesting, let's say. 
Okay, to merge these or join these in uh, as in Rhino, let's say, uh, you can uh, select any of these uh, shapes and hit attach and attach them together. But even then, you still won't have a closed spline because uh, yeah, these two objects are joined, but there's separate splines. Like this is one of the splines and this is uh, the other spline. So what you need to do is to hit one, hit control A again, and just hit weld from here. Let's drop this to point one again and just hit weld. And then when you select the spline, you will have a closed one in here. Okay. This is one thing you can do. You, you can draw the line, attach and then weld. I know it see, uh, sounds a little bit complicated, but when you understand 3ds Max, it really is not that complicated. And it's, uh, you see that it's a little bit necessary actually, but whatever for now, let's just learn it this way. I'm doing this again because I explained the steps uh, along the way. It took a little bit more time, but you will see that it's not that long to do or it's not that uh, hard to do. I'll just grab the line tool, just draw a line, select this spline, attach it, and then hit one, select all and weld. Okay. This is what I do to uh, create a closed spline. This is not the only way, of course, there are a lot of shortcuts. Let me show one, uh, you one of them. Uh, this is the most uh, straightforward way, uh, because if you are, came from other 3D softwares, uh, this is uh, how they think actually. But in 3ds Max, because this takes a little bit of uh, too many steps to do, uh, there are some shortcuts. Uh, the first one I want to show you is connect, and it's very cool. If you go to the vertex mode, because uh, what connect does is it connects these two vertices. So it's under vertex mode. Uh, you can see that it's activated in here. I'll click on this and just draw, uh, click and drag from here to here. And when I release, you will see that it instantly creates this line in here uh, or segment, let's say. And when I select the spline, it's already closed because, uh, because it connects these two vertices, it also welds uh, the new segment uh, to the old segments okay uh, that's a very cool uh, shortcut uh, it will come very handy uh, when you want to close splines like this okay um, and what i want to uh, tell you more in this tutorial is i i wanted to show you a couple more things uh, first thing is as we draw this we use the gr uh, grid snaps tool or grid snaps uh, method. But if you are not using any snaps, if you are drawing something like this, for example, let's hit S to get rid of this, you will always uh, face a problem like this. Because you are not using snaps, this vertex and this vertex won't, will never be aligned in the x-axis. So if you, even if you close this, the bottom line in here, it won't be straight, uh, won't be a straight line. Okay. There are a couple of ways to make this right. I'll hit one to go to the vertex mode, select this vertex. And you can, you can see that in the Y axis, it's at minus 1.645. You can just right click on the spinner to get this to zero. Let's just do that. It will be much easier, but whatever. If it's not at zero, it doesn't matter again. I'll show you that as well in a minute. But to make this a straight line, you can also select this vertex and just uh, zero this out as well. And as you can see, it's uh, straight now because both of these have the same value in the y-axis. If I undo this, you can also, if you don't want to zero this, uh, you can also select it, control C and just select this and control V. And this will make this straight as well because again, they will have the same value in the uh, y-axis. Okay. It's a straight line parallel to the x-axis, but uh, they should have the same value in the y-axis. Uh, you will uh, understand this uh, if you learn a little bit of analytical geometry. It's not that hard actually, but uh, let me explain this way. If you draw a straight line, uh, the axis it hits is the axis you are looking for in here. Okay. Okay. Uh, one more thing I want to show you is uh, actually, there's one more method for this. Let me show that as well. It's a little bit uh, less uh, less solid because uh, it won't let you select the Y value, but it's a little bit faster, so you can go with this as well. If you hit 2 to, to go to the segment mode and select the segment, sloped segment, let's say, uh, and you want to hit E 
uh, to go to this scale tool. And if you scale this down in the Y axis, it, you will see that if I hit G, you will see it a little bit better. You will see that it turns this line to a straight line. It's a little bit weird, but le let's make this a little bit more obvious. Uh, I will just scale this down in the Y axis. You will see that it instantly creates this straight line and it's really cool. Uh, you, uh, I know that I haven't selected the Y value, but you can hit W and then select it from here. It doesn't matter. Uh, but uh, this is a very cool method for this as well. Okay. One last thing I want to show you in this lesson is, uh, let's break one of these and uh, create two uh, vertices uh, from here. Uh, one last trick I want to show you is the automatic welding in here. I'm sure you noticed it because it's uh, above the weld uh, and it says automatic welding, so it should be something good. Uh, I don't really use this that much, but it's sometimes it's a little bit useful. To use this, you need to enable it, of course, and also you need to e uh, input a threshold value just like in here. Okay, let's leave it as six centimeters for now. What it does is it, if you move this vertex and drop it uh, near this vertex and the uh, near threshold is uh, right here. So if you move this and drop it in the uh, range of six centimeters around this vertex, it will weld them automatically if they are both open, of course. Okay, that's very, uh, important, by the way. So let me show you. If I hit S to enable the vertex uh, snap, and just grab this and leave it on top of this one and it will instantly weld them. To check that, uh, I'm going to just select it and you will see that it's closed in here. Uh, by the way, I usually check it like this. I'll just select one of these and move it. And if they move together, then uh, it means that they are welded. Let me show that again. I will hit Ctrl Z. Uh, I've enabled the automatic welding and uh, adjusted the threshold value and then I'll move this on top of this one and just drop it. That's it. Like I just moved it actually. Okay. And then you know that they are welded together. Let's hit undo again. One more thing I want to show you. I'll hit S again. Uh, because this value says six centimeters, you can leave the vertex anywhere in the range of six centimeters. Uh, it should be something like this, I guess. Let's hit G to get that. Uh, you know that one grid square is 10 centimeters, so it should be something like this. Okay. If I let's zoom in a little bit more. If I grab it and I, I, I'm not going to drop it right on top of it, but near it. Okay. Let's drop it in here, for example. Doesn't work. Let's do this again. Okay. As you can see, it welded them, even if I haven't dropped it. Let's make this a little bit bigger and then it will work a little bit, I guess uh, it will look a little bit obvious, more obvious. So I'll just try it again. I'll drop it in here. Yeah. As you can see, if I grab this and drop it somewhere in the range of 60 centimeters, yeah, they weld together as you can see. But it, it moves the vertices uh, off a little bit, I guess. So I recommend you to use S, the snap mode with this and just drop it on top of the old vertex and this will just close this spline. Okay. Okay. So let's do something useful with this and outline uh, this 20 centimeters and then apply an extrude and voila, you have a, uh, let's uh, uh, change the extrude amount to 300 and you have a living room <laughs> maybe, or, or it, could this be a whole flat? I guess it's a little bit uh, small for that, but whatever. Okay, this is how we uh, create uh, or uh, use uh, weld and break and uh, connect to create uh, closed splines or maybe break <laughs> the splines. Um, okay, thanks for listening. Hope this was useful. If you find it useful, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and, the hit, and hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button. Thanks for listening. See you in the next lesson.